Hey guys, what is going on? It's me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God update video. A pretty massive balancing update just hit us earlier today, and it affects a rather wide array of categories, specifically wine cellar tops, tiered items as a whole, dungeon capacity, and even Realm's economy. I'm gonna go down the line here and hit each one of these points fairly quickly, paraphrasing their reasoning behind certain decisions, and of course, I'll leave a link for you all to check out and form your own opinions on. First up is the tiered ability rescaling. Up until now, most tier 6 abilities were essentially reskins of tier 5 abilities, just with an extra 2 vitality and wisdom. Take the tier 5 golden quiver for instance, identical stats across the board compared to elvish except for that bonus 2 vit and whiz. Even though wine cellar tops were very expensive and rare back in realm's heyday, there really was no justification for paying all that extra life for an item that could do practically the same thing as one you could buy for way cheaper, or already had. Now they at least scale appropriately. Tier 0 through 5 have had their damages proportionately reduced so that the tier 6 does the most damage and receives the most stat bonuses. That 2 vit and whiz has been taken out entirely in exchange for 20 HP and MP. And for each individual ability, there are some stats of focus. Ghostly Cloak with 5 speed and dexterity evenly. Elvish Quiver offers 6 dexterity. Spells now give wisdom, plus 1 per tier. Tomes give vitality. Helms and shields give defense like before. Paladin Seals provide dexterity. Poisons give wisdom, but only 3 at the max tier. Skulls are unchanged from what I can tell in terms of stat offerings, but you still get the HP bonus, don't worry. Traps give attack. Orbs give a small amount of vitality. Prisms give 6 whole wisdom at tier 6, Scepters with a tiny speed bonus, Ninja Stars with a whopping 9 vitality, I'll take what I can get, and the Wakizashis mirroring the quivers with dexterity. I'm a big fan of this change, I completely agree with their reasoning. Oryx 3 will be on the way soon enough and this will streamline the stats to make way for tier 7 abilities. Wine cellar weapons and armors, however, are unchanged, but the tier 14 and 15 armors and tier 13 and 14 weapons have all been slightly buffed to create a wider gap of distinction between the old and new tops. A couple other items were buffed as well, armor of nil, ritual robe, breastplate, and the tier 6 unbound rings that offer a singular stat go from 9 to 10. Wine cellar tops have also had their drop locations severely cut down, becoming exclusive to the wine cellar and the shatters. It's no secret that nearly all tops, especially weapons and armors, have become charitable trade fodder at best over the last couple years. G Sork holds no value anymore because of the sheer abundance that exists. By limiting its drop table to these two areas, the hope is that the economy will gradually fix itself over time, as there become less and less of them in the trading pool, and maybe then they'll regain some of their lost value. Simultaneously, tier 13 weapons and tier 14 armors have had their respective drop rates increased, since you can no longer get any other tier of equipment from, say, the Lost Halls. That's a nice compromise on paper, but we'll have to see the in-game effects of that before making a judgement call. The drop rates of over 50 white bag UTs have also been buffed, and that's gonna sound insane, but their reasoning is to, once again, proportionately balance out any inconsistencies in the drop rates. They use the example of how Bulwark shouldn't be as rare as it is, because it's just not that amazing. While other items like Doombo have not have their drops increased because that's a really good item that is just as rare as it should be. Or something like the Shatters taking a long time to complete and almost never yielding the rewards you deserve for the work you put in. This will help counterbalance that. Again, we'll have to play around with this in-game and document the results over time. Potion drops in end-game dungeons have now been scaled appropriately too. This is another method to try and control the amount of potions flooding the market because of 100 plus players in a group steamrolling a lost halls and getting rich. So now a group of 85 people won't be bringing home 200-something potions into the economy and turn life pots into pennies. To complement this, they've reduced the dungeon capacity from 85 to 65 players. And while that number is subject to change, they'll be monitoring it carefully, this is all in an effort to make the game feel more substantial. Less total players means less steamrolling. Dungeons take slightly longer, so you can't chain as many in the same amount of time. Not as many potions and items are being acquired so they can maintain their rarity. The likelihood of dying goes up from less meat shields and healers, which in turn makes the game more engaging because you have to participate to live and play. I'll have to think about all of this more deeply on my own to really see the vision and most plausible outcome and effects of all this, but my gut instinct is telling me that this is the right direction the game should be taking. DECA's intentions alone speak volumes here. They really are trying to fix some pretty huge issues the game has had for a while. Balancing is one of the hardest things to get right in a multiplayer game, especially one with frequent updates where new stuff is always being added. But on the whole, I like what I see here, and my only hope is that this will ultimately work in the game's favor and make it more fun to play for the vast majority. I'm ready to give it as much time as it needs, and hopefully reap the benefits. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.